Hello everybody, welcome to the video. This is episode 2 of my main event wrestling series where I detail my life and career as a professional wrestler. Well, as I left off in my last video, basically how wrestling entered my life through my stepdad and how I wanted to be a wrestler and how I started hanging around promotions, hanging around shows. Well, I started going to wrestling camps, I started going to wrestling school and I was learning how to be a wrestler and I was getting training 24-7 around the clock and it's actually very expensive to get trained as a wrestler and rightfully so because wrestling is dangerous i encourage no one to do backyard wrestling i encourage no one to do wrestling unless they have been properly trained by someone with credentials because in wrestling if you screw up you could kill somebody or yourself that's just not cool it's a lot harder than it looks obviously when you see a wrestler do it they make it look easy you know michael jordan made shooting jumpers look easy barry bonds makes hitting home runs look easy tiger woods makes cheating on his wife look really really easy so wrestling looks easy on tv and anyone can do that and for the most part i guess anyone could but you don't realize the risk that a lot of wrestlers are putting themselves in if you watch an average two-hour episode of Monday Night Raw, which I haven't seen in a very long time, but it, when I do watch it, I saw it a couple years ago, there's about 10, 15 times where someone's life is hanging on the line in the sense that if something goes wrong, they could be permanently injured or die. So wrestling's dangerous. Don't try it at home. Well, how I started wrestling was the first time I got to be on the other side of the curtain, ringside, was there was a wrestler his name was steve stardom and he was uh he was huge he was really big in the territory i was wrestling in he was a really big independent wrestler and he was a baby face a good guy going against the world champion who was a heel a bad guy and the world champion was somebody everyone hated and the world champion the heel his name was ian xavier and xavier was always cheating to win the title doing all the bad guy tactics and everyone hated him well here came here comes stardom he's the good guy and he has legitimate wrestling skill and he always came close to beating xavier but xavier of course always cheated to win because xavier always had a manager or someone ringside to help him cheat well my role that night was since i was a bigger guy was okay I'm going to be Stardom's bodyguard. So if anyone tries to pull any ringside shenanigans, I'm going to put a stop to it. Well, this was billed as a huge match. And a lot of people drew for it because they thought, well, now that Steve Stardom has a bodyguard, and this guy looks pretty tough, this guy looks pretty mean, Steve Stardom's going to get a fair shot at the title and he's going to win because Ian Xavier, he held that world championship for over a year. So people were really getting tired of seeing him be a world champion they wanted him to lose so this was the shot well what ended up happening was is before the bell even started i was ringside and i was acting like i was talking with steve stardom and like all right i'm here for you buddy this is what we got to do blah 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 well the other manager for ian xavier his name was tommy something i forget his name um came around and he fell on the ground i didn't even touch him and he goes, ref, ref, what the hell is this? This guy just, I didn't even do anything. So I got ejected from ringside before the match even started. So that was my only experience ringside in a wrestling match is not even during the match was I even involved in it. And I got sent back to the backstage and Stardom and Ian Xavier had a wonderful match and a great ending. Of course, Ian Xavier ended up winning and keeping his title. But the way they handled it, they really made it look like Steve Stardom was still going to win anyways. But that was all my experience. Well, two weeks later, I'm at the same promotion. I set up the ring, and I'm in the ring, and I'm doing some training. I'm working on some spots or maneuvers and just practicing before the show starts or before the crowd starts filtering in. I'm practicing and working with a lot of veterans and a lot of trainers to hone my wrestling craft so someday I could have my own match well that match on the card was a wrestler named Norman Smiley who used to be a b-level card wrestler and WCW he's actually a very technically sound wrestler 
but that was his big claim to fame in WCW. It kind of was a a joke character. He was a comic relief wrestling character. Kind of like, um, well, who's that one guy? Santino Morella? Something like that in WWE today. That That's kind of what Norman Smiley's role was back in the old WCW. Well, he was wrestling with a couple other wrestlers. Angel Armani, Jack Jurassic. I can't think of the other ones. But he was wrestling with them at one venue. I believe it was, it was at a casino. And after their match, they were going to book it to our show. So they were going to wrestle two shows in one day. Well, they were running late. And they were actually supposed to be there before the show started or right when the show started. Well, when the show started or two minutes of showtime, the show was going and these six guys that were supposed to be there weren't there. They were running late. So they came up to me and said, Ben, you have to wrestle. And there was no arguing. I had to wrestle. I had to wrestle a match. So holy baptism by fire. I didn't have any experience with that. But they paired me with someone who was a veteran wrestler, and he was nice enough to let me win my first match, which you think winning and losing in wrestling doesn't matter, but the way wrestling is and the business, winning and losing very much matters. Example, would you want to see Hulk Hogan every time he hulks up lose? Would Hulk Hogan be famous if he lost all the time? No, winning adds more stock to your character. The more stock to your wrestling persona or character you have, the more money you're able to make with it because at the end of the day wrestling is very much a business it's an entertainment but it is business so your character is your brand and a lot of wrestlers are very protective about it and that's where egos come in so i got to wrestle my first match baptism under fire and i ended up wrestling three times in the first night and that was quite an adventure so in the next video i'll talk about all three matches in my first ever time wrestling and if you want to hear more that'd be really awesome if you come back if you want to you can subscribe you can follow me on twitter there's a link in the description below and i hope everyone had a good day bye